Texas Math Mundo audience. Today we have the 1985 UIL state champion in number sense from Brazoswood High School, a proud Buccaneer, Dr. Nue Ho. It promises to be a good one. I'm really looking forward to his perspective of the 1985 number sense state champion, uh, Dr. Nue Ho, right ahead. Uh, let me take a moment and remind you that if you enjoy this sort of material, please hit the subscription button and the notification bell. It really helps me out. Smash that like button and leave a comment below. Dr. Nue Ho, right ahead, 1985 number set state champion. My name is Saul Cantu and this is Texas Math Mundo. Texas Math Mundo audience, we have with us the 1985 state champion in number sense from Brazos Wood High School, a proud buccaneer, Dr. Nue Ho. Welcome, Dr. Nue Ho. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, I, I'm so happy you're here, man. I'm so happy you're here. So, so how you been doing? Uh, doing pretty well. Um, so, you know, we, uh, we, I have a, a, a medical company now, and that's what we're running, and we're doing really well. We're in six different cities, and we're growing. So, oh, a medical company. really good. Yes. You, go ahead and not, say it out loud for us. What is the company? Uh, Total Care to You. Total Care that's to You. That's the company's name. Right. So, we specialize in seeing in patient, sick patient in their home, a uh, patient that can't go to the doctor. Um, so we see them all over the state of Texas. Uh, we have a uh, patient in Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, Houston, wow. Tyler, Longview. Yes. That must keep you busy. It is. It's, it's very fun. It is, it's very, very fun. Uh, huh? Especially, I started the company and I own it, so it's very fun. For me. Oh, how was that during the pandemic? That must have been especially challenging. It was very challenging, but we were doing a lot of telemedicine. Um, so it that that we just kept on doing it. So um, we're one of the few company that actually, um, you know, the pandemic just put us over the board. I mean, we really got busy during pandemic. Oh, really? Because of the service you provide, yeah. it actually became more right. busy. Right. Right. Wow. And what kind of doctor are you again? I am an internal medicine doctor. Internal medicine. Wow. Sounds complicated. Right. Sounds hard. Sounds boy, you must... <laughs> Wow. 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 So, so that's your career. Wow, wow. So when you're not busy, and I'm sure that takes up the lion's share of your time, uh, uh, what other hobbies and interests do you engage in? Gosh, I love to travel. Um, I love to uh, especially travel internationally. Um, I love to uh, fish, go fishing. I love to spend time with my kids. Well, then I kiss them with the 20 and 18, but I uh, spend time with my children. Um, fishing, driving my car. Um, something that's real relaxing. I, I enjoy that a lot. Oh, that sounds great, man. I'm a fisherman guy too, man. You got to tell me some good spots good. over there in Freeport. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. I still go back to Freeport sometimes to go to the jetty. Um, nowadays, I, I go to Sargent, Texas, which is a little bit outside of Freeport. Um, and there's a canals there and everything. And it's real easy. You can just fish off the canal. So it's, yes, yeah, a lot of fun. Some good fishing. A lot of relaxing. Very relaxing. Oh, yes. I love it. You speak in my language. I love fishing, man. I go out there to Texas City Dyke. I love it. So I know what you're talking uh -huh. about. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So what places do you like to travel to? 
God, so for the past two months, I've been, I've been to the Dominican Republic once. I've been to Ukraine twice. Uh, I'm going to Russia in August. Um, and then to, where else have I been to? Oh, I've been to Hawaii also in the last two months. Within the last two months, oh, I've wow. been doing it. So. so much fun. The world traveler. Wow, that's, that's fun. Well, I, I just love traveling, so it's good. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, 1985, number sent state champion, man. I'm in awe of that. That's yeah. so wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so where are you from, born and raised, and what's your cultural heritage? So I'm Vietnamese. I was born in Vietnam. Uh, and I came to the United States when I was eight years old, 1974. Really? So that's right. like the fall of uh, Vietnam and... Right, the fall of Saigon. We left uh, We left about three days before the fall of South Vietnam. Are you serious? Wow. Yes. That must have been... And you were eight years old? I was eight years old at that time, yes. I can't even, even imagine being eight years old and having all that happen. Yeah. So y'all, well, we came out. I, I came over here with my mom and my brothers, my two brothers and my sister. My dad was uh, he was a, a big police officer for the South Vietnam. Yeah. So he was caught behind enemy lines after the war, and he became a POW for fourteen years. So and he, really, yes, and he finally came over uh, in nineteen ninety one. Oh my God! I could. So you were eight years old in nineteen seventy four. And then you didn't even see your father until 1991. Yes, that's correct. What an incredible story. Please tell me he heard that in 1985 you were the state champion. Yes, he did. Oh. He heard it. and Yes, so uh, it, was, it was, yes, he was very proud, very happy at that time. So. Oh, I hope so, man, because, boy, if that, would have, that would make a father smile from end to end. You know what I'm saying? I know I'd be smiling. Yes. <laughs> What an incredible story. So you all had to uh, to make do without him for all those years. Yes. Must have been a must have been one uh, uh, must have been a very hard time in some ways, I would imagine. But I you know, it, it was but if you look back at now, it helped uh, it helped, you know, me to become who I am today. Um, so, you know, I had uncles and aunts and my mom and everything. So yeah, so even though I didn't have my father, I have a lot of relatives that helped me uh, you know, mold me the way I am now. So. What a fascinating story, man. What a fascinating story. So, uh, so were you like, did you go to, uh, to Clute and Freeport area right off the bat? Is that where you all settled down? No, we actually, we came over and we, the first city we were in Gross, Texas. Okay. So it's near Beaumont, Paul Arthur area. And then my mom got a job with Dow Kimco in Lake Jackson, Texas. So that's when we moved to Lake Jackson, Texas. I think I was in the seventh, seventh grade when I moved to Lake Jackson, Texas. And we, I grew up and went to high school at Brightswood and everything. So. Oh, okay. Wow, wow. So when did you realize that you had a talent for mathematics? Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I, you know, I like math a lot. And, uh, you know, I compete in math a lot. And so I, I like it, but I... I'm not sure I had the talent for it. I knew that I had to work at it okay. uh, and, you know, really, you know, um, dedicate myself to it if I want to compete well in it. Um, but, you know, when you're at, I, I think, the, uh, you know, all the competitor, once you get to, like, district level, everybody's really good. Okay. And, you know, sometimes take a little bit of luck to get on to the next round and that type of thing. So, but, you know, I, I thought I was pretty good from the beginning. Yeah, wow. Hey, you were state champion. Number one, the whole state of Texas, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you worked hard, but I'm sure there was some natural ability, too. It must. I'm sure you worked hard, but that's awesome, man. Um, so, who inspired you and who shaped your value system? My, my uh, grandfather. He really is. He really is the one that it really, you know, um, uh, he came over here to the United States with us. And so he really shaped, you know, how I value education and everything. So I have, I have a good story about that. Yeah. I was, um, I was like in the eighth and ninth grade, I can't remember. I was watching a football game with him. Uh, and at the time, Roger Staubach was quarterback for the Cowboys. <laughs> and in the middle of the game, I, he looked over, he said, I'd much rather be a doctor and live paycheck to paycheck than make millions and be a football player. Really? That, that, and I still remember to that day. So he really shaped 
uh, you know, the way I think about education and everything. So, yes, yeah, so, so uh, on him. So he was, he, he was a teacher in Vietnam. So um, he shaped me that way. Yeah. Oh, that's such a fa fantastic story. Well, wow, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So your grandpa. Right. But then all my aunts and uncles, yeah. they're all they were in engineer, you know, chemical engineer and everything. And, wow. you know, you have to understand when we came over, um, we didn't have money. So half my own, half of them will actually go to college where they'll have work. And, you know, we share everything together. And, and they all became, you know, really successful in engineer, all kind of chemical engineer, electrical engineer, everything. So, that, that, you know, they also shape, you know, the way mm -hmm. I look at education, how much value put into education. So you had some role models and stuff. Oh, definitely, oh, definitely. Wow. That's wonderful. How the family really united, worked hard, yeah. had to work. That's what you know. The only troubling thing I heard was that you were watching the Cowboys. That was the only. <laughs> <job>. <laughs> now you know I'm not a much of a Cowboys fan. I'm actually, a, believe it or not, I'm a Browns fan. Oh, really? Yeah, Browns, right. So uh, my son and I are we're big Browns fan now. So we got uh, we got the uh, opening season tickets against Kansas City coming up. You know, in September twelfth. So not the Browns to City catch that. So really, so not the yeah. Browns that left the Baltimore. You're still with the Browns. <laughs> I'm still with the Browns. I, yeah, I live and breathe the Browns. So hey, well, you know, I'm with you because that AFC Central, the old AFC Central had the Browns, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Oilers. I don't know if you the remember. Oilers, yes, at that time, yes. Yeah, wow, that's awesome, man. That's so awesome. I like how sports really unites people. You know. Yes. So a Browns fan, boy, you've had some tough years. Oh, God, many, many tough years. We haven't got anything good yet. So, you know, I do my, I do the bracket for the Browns beginning of the year because I realize we can't do bracket at the end of the year. So I bracket after the beginning of the year. We say we're going to win Super Bowl and everything and then, you know, hey, go from there. But let me tell you what, you got big time respects because you, all those tough years, you're still a Browns fan. That's what makes you yes. a fan. So yes. big time respect, man. You know where I'm coming from? <laughs> awesome. And I awesome. indoctrinate my son too. So, you know, we go. We try to catch about three or four Browns games a year, and you know, we fly to the Cleveland catch oh, the game. Really, so. that's so awesome. Yeah. You know, I love you said that because even with my father, you know, sports is such a bonding experience between father and son. You know yes. what I'm saying? And that's so beautiful. The, the beauty of that is just, it's very special. So that's such yes. an awesome thing that you share that stuff with your son. Yes. So awesome. So I awesome. love it. So awesome. So I was going to ask, you know, UIL the 1985 season and Brazoswood High School. So what was Brazoswood High School? You say it's in Clute, Texas? Yes. What was Texas. Brazoswood High School like in the mid-80s? Wow. Uh, we were good in football and baseball. As a matter of fact, before I, before I started going to Brazoswood, they won the state championship in football. Really? Uh, and we, we didn't win anything during my four years there, but uh, we were good for uh, football and, and baseball. Um, everybody lived, you know, worked for Dow Chemical. So all, all you know, all the, 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 uh, the student, most of the parents worked for Dow Chemical. So um, it was a very, it, it was a, personally, I think it was the best town to grow up in. Really? And I, yeah. Oh, God, I, I love Lake Jackson, Texas. It's a, yes, it is, it, is, it is a perfect place to grow up in. You know what? You're inspiring me to go visit because I don't live too far, man. I need to go visit then. And we got we got many thin, many uh, city. We have uh, I mean the street. We have that way, this way, circle way, wrong way. Uh, we have everything. So <laughs> everything is way down there. So um, yes. So it's sometimes very difficult to show you the direction sure. because everything's way this way that. But <laughs> it, it the people are just phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it just it's just a wonderful, wonderful place to grow up wow you know what man now you got me curious now you got me mm -hmm. curious you know i'm gonna have to make a, i'm gonna have to make a trip out that way i'm gonna take my fishing pole also but i'm gonna make a trip oh out that god way. yes you gotta go to you gotta go to jetty and go fishing yes, oh, yes. absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so what was the academic environment like did you all have like did you have teammates did you have a coach and what was the academic mm -hmm. environment like in those days when i got there we didn't have much of a um much of a math team mm -hmm. we were just you know just a bunch of people get together and then our uh, mr hendricks was our coach um but uh, he basically he, he blessed his heart he used to want to get up early saturday morning and yeah. drive us everywhere to tournament yeah you know all that time you know on his you know, own time and everything so uh we had about maybe 10 or 12 members 
um, you know, and that's what we did. So, but we try to go to a lot, a lot of tournaments and everything. So um, it, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, Mr. Kendrick. Hendrick. Oh, Hendrick. Hendricks, right. So, Mr. Hendricks was a coach, uh, and he really helped you all, and he really organized the troops, and he, he put in a lot of effort. Right. Oh, God, yes, he did. He put a lot of effort in. Just imagine, you know, every waking up Saturday morning at 4 o'clock and drive the bus, not everybody, you know, to wherever we go to compete, you know. So, no. we never spend a night, so we always mm -hmm. drive there, sometimes three, four hours, compete. Then drive all the way back in the same day. So. so beautiful. Great shout out to Mr. Hendricks. Great, great shout, yes. shout out. Hey, and uh, do you want to give a shout out to any of your fellow teammates also? Oh my God, I met so many. You know, um, Lily Lee uh, was a friend of mine and she was was in there too. Uh, oh my God, what else? Uh, James Tomiski, oh. he was another, he was three years younger, but he's also very good. My brother was on the team. Uh, so those oh. of you I remember, um, God, yeah, that just there's there were other I'm sure, but I f forget all their names. So. Okay, yeah, sure, awesome, awesome. Um, and so, what was the practice? Did y'all practice a lot, or what were your study habits? Well, actually, we didn't practice. We will get together. Um, you know, I think I can't remember like once a week or something during lunch hour. Mm -hmm. But really, much everybody's on their own. Okay. Uh, you know, to 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 develop. You know, and to to you know to compete that way. Yeah, yeah. So um, yes, so we. We weren't very um, uh, experienced in competing. M uh, Mr. Hendricks was not ex very experienced yeah. in this. So everything I learned, you know, I kind of uh, did on my own. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. So you uh, did a lot of independent study. But, you know. Oh, God, yes. And it can't be underestimated. You still need a sponsor to take you to these tournaments. You still need a sponsor yes. to organize the troops. So I always tell yes. sponsors, it's not even about knowing the material. They just need somebody to take them for, you know what yes. I'm saying? And that's so important. Yes. Wow, wow. Hey, so I know you're the number sense champion, but did um, you all, did you do calculator in those days? I did calculator. Do you remember um, the calculator? Actually, the funny part is I thought I was better in calculator than number sense. <laughs> and I won everything calculator up until, uh, up until uh, state where I came in, I think I believe I came in eighth. Oh, really? So I, I, yeah, I was nervous and it just did not, I did not feel good that morning. <sighs> um, and yeah, so... But I, I, I've always done well in calculator. Really? So, Do you remember the calculator yeah. those days? Do you remember which one you used? Yes, I used the HP calculator. Really? Oh, the Hewlett reverse Polish? Yes. <laughs> Hewlett Packard, yes. A lot of people at that time were using TI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I used an HP calculator. Uh, that, that reverse Polish notation. Yes. And the thing was, the one who taught me that was Stephen Wu, who was a 1984 uh, number says and calculator state champion. Yeah, so I've been trying to contact him. I've been trying to contact him. I can't find him. Yeah. You got his contact. Let yeah. me know. Stephen Wu, yeah, 1984. He came from Alvin High School. Yeah. And we were in the same district. And we became really good friends. Uh, and then he said, no, you need, can't use CI. Use HP. And so he introduced me to HP. And then I started using HP my, sometime my junior oh. year. And went on from there. That's a great story. How Stephen Wu and you yes. collaborated and stuff. Hey, if you got his yeah. contact information, give it to me afterwards. Because I've been trying okay. to reach him. I've been trying to reach him. So yeah, awesome. he's. I mean, he was one of the very few. One of the one. Uh, you know, I remember at the time when number sense and uh, calculator. Yeah. Now at the time we couldn't compete in uh, science either. Oh. So you have to pick oh. number sense, calculate, or you know, uh, you know, we you just couldn't. There was a conflict. There was no time in there. Yes, there was a conflict. But I think you know they. That's what I always felt like. They should allow, if you want to compete in three, all three, you should be able to. Well, now they do. Now they have an official okay. conflict pattern. So you are allowed. You can do number sense, calculator, math, oh, and science. Okay. They, they've, okay. they've remedied that. They've solved that. So, okay, good. 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 That, that's very good. Awesome, awesome. So um, what is the most memorable moment or moments from those years? Well, I, I think the, the most memorable moment, of course, when you find out you won the state. Now that, that, I mean, that was like, oh my gosh, you know, that kind of like, you couldn't believe it. And, you know, wow, you know, uh, that is probably is sticking my mind the most. But I, I can be honest, looking back at now, what helped me the most is preparing for the state. It's to get to the state. You know, I, I compete three years without winning, you know, not winning state until my senior year. So, you know, not giving up, keep going, keep going, keep practicing. Um, I think that 
now looking back, I'm more proud of that. Uh, how much I put myself through versus when it's at state, it's just like, you know, it was, I was lucky there, you know, at that time you got really good people there and it just happens to be that that day I would happen to have the highest score. But the process of you going through all that to get to that point, you look back now, and I, I learned the most in that process. You know, Dr. Nguyen Ho, I'm glad you said that because it's really the journey. And you know, yes. You got to stand on the mountaintop. You got to get the gold medal. You you got the limelight. You know what I'm saying? And, and yes. I'm interviewing you all these years later. But the reality is, you would have learned beautiful mathematics. The experience yes. would have prepared for you, even if you hadn't won it. So it really is that journey. Yes. It really is that journey. I love it what is. you just said. I love what you just said, man. But you are the champion. How does it feel? Even so now... It feels great. Ah. It, it, even, ah. even to now, I look back and go, oh my gosh. You know, even even now, I so I took the medal, I, you know, put in a, a, a case, hung it up on the wall. And yeah, it, it seemed like it was yesterday that I, I found out I won. So, hey. yeah, it was. I tell all the young ones I interview, that's bragging rights for the rest of your life. For the yeah, rest no of your life. No one can take that away from you. <laughs> no one can take that away from that's you. That's right. It. That's so right, man. I'm so happy, man. Uh, us, us mortals, we just dream of that. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you, you have to understand. So I'm, you know, Francis Sue was a, is a, also a friend of mine from uh, uh, that same competed the same year I was. Okay. And the guy, if you look at him now, he's like president of uh, United States Mathematics Association. I mean, he's really big time. Oh. Wow. Yeah, he got his PhD in mathematics and everything. He's in California now. Um, and uh, I remember. I was scared of him the most because it was me and him and we, we were friends, we were a good mm -hmm. friend. And so it was like, man, one of us gonna lose and one of us, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but I still remember Francis. Um, and yeah, so it, it, just, it just happened to be that day. I got more luck that day than other people. That would, if it's happened another day, something else would have won, so. I feel you, I feel you. I think it's a little modest of you, but sure, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where do you keep that gold medal? On my wall. I love it. You can point I'm to it. Wall. You can point yeah, to it. Stay champion. I'm a, I'm a right, right next to my medical degree. Oh, I love it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right on the wall where you know belongs prominently displayed. Great. Yes. So where did you go to college and what degree did you earn? I went to uh, MIT for college. MIT? Really? Right, wow. right. That's uh, one of the most prestigious universities on the planet. Wow! Still, the, my best, uh, the best years of my life was at MIT. Wow! That, yes, wow. that must have been one fantastic experience. And what degree did you? Oh, earn? I love it. I'm sorry. And what degree did you earn there? Well, what what did you study? Uh, I studied biology there. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Biology there. Wow. Well, I'll be honest with you. Here's what I went there to want to study physics. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Then, sometime my junior year, I realized I'm too dumb to be a physicist. <laughs> There's too many smart people at MIT and. They're a lot smarter than I am, and so I went to biology. I switched my major to biology, and then I became a doctor. Hey, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I think you do pretty well uh, helping people in their lives, mm -hmm. man. Such a meaningful, meaningful career you have. Wow. Uh, do you think that your UIL journey helped you out with, at all with that career? In oh, gosh, yes. Yes. Um, I actually, even to this day, if anybody asks for advice to uh, go to one of these schools, MIT, Caltech, whatever, I would always tell them you need to compete outside your academic world, you, you know, because what they're looking for is someone who knows how to compete. They want to know if, hey, if you lose, what, you, what are you going to do when you lose? And that is very key because we are going to lose, you know. Uh, through Journal of Life, we're going to lose a lot more than we win. Uh, and how are you going to respond to losing? Um, and I remember when I went to MIT, we had a lot of suicide. There's one gut kid that was two years older than me, and his dad was a dean of the chemical engineering department. And I remember, right, I remember he had a really high GPA, like a 3.8 GPA out of 4. He committed suicide. Oh, wow. So, you know, so I, I think, you know, competing, uh, knowing how to lose, how to respond to losing is so, so important. Oh, man, you know, that's a fascinating point you just made. That's yeah. a fascinating, you got to know how to lose and then how you're going to react yes. to the loss. And how exactly. Gonna, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that's really an important point you just made. Holy cow. Yeah, so 
you know, because we're all going to lose, man. You got to persevere. Learn how yes. to persevere. You're going to lose a lot more. You're going to lose a lot more than you win. Hey, so. the first three years you didn't win, and then oh you hit, God, no, you know. And I, I cry. I, I cry a lot. My junior year, I was like, how could I start all this time and then still not make it? I did not make it to state. I that, I lost that region. So. You know, it's because you're so vested. You're vested all the time you spent, all the effort, and you're emotionally right. invested, man. I, I feel you, man. Right. And you know what? When you put your heart into it, you know, it makes the defeat that much harder to take, but also it makes yes. the victory that much sweeter. <laughs> oh, God, yes. I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. You know? So uh, so you're around Freeport nowadays? Uh, are you around well, there? I, well, nowadays, I travel a lot in the within the state because my company is in, in so many cities. Yeah. Um, so I so I live in the woodlands, but also live in I also have an apartment in, in Dallas. So I'm going back and forth, and then some. A lot of time I'm in San Antonio, Austin, okay. Tyler. So I travel a lot. No. Okay. Do you ever make it back to Freeport at all, or not? Just sometimes? Oh, or? all the time. Every other weekend, I would go back to Freeport and start to go to fishing. Oh, okay. And you got some family there. Yeah. Yes. There you go. That sounds like a good time. Family fishing. Probably some good right. food. Probably some good food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, say it. Awesome. So, I'm going to ask you, what do you value the most about your UIL journey? Value the most? If you ask me now, I value how I took losing and not giving up. Oh, well, yes. For me, that is that is the most. If now I might not have said that back then, but now looking back at it, yes. How did how do you how do you pick yourself up when you lose? Yeah, I value that the most. Wow, that's that's great. That's great. So this next question is a big one. It's a big one. So okay, I hope that this video is out for decades and decades. I hope you know, or even longer, whatever. So the point right. is that. You know, you're a name in an archive, but now that you come in this interview, you're a face, you're a personality, and I love it. So if a young kid comes across this interview and, and they see, you know, state champion, 1985, Dr. Nui Ho, what advice would you give that young kid? Enjoy the journey. Don't take losing to heart. Enjoy the journey. Losing will make you become a winner. Losing will teach you how to become a winner and enjoy it. The journey is you, a lot of time. I didn't. I'll be honest. I did not enjoy the journey until I won state. And I won state, and I feel great. But now looking back at it, I value the journey more than winning state. Wow! Enjoy the journey while while you're there. Some great advice. Some great advice. And I hope these kids who listen to this take it to heart. That's great advice. I would love to. You know, if they want to contact me, they can. They're more than welcome to contact me, and I can help them. I, I have. I, I got an example. I was at when a, there is a thing that's called mental burnout. There, there is a thing of that. So I explained when I was a junior, uh, my score was always in the high 300s from when I first started. And I keep on practicing, practicing. By the time uh, January rolled around, my score was dipped into the mid 300. And I didn't know why. I was like, you know, I'm, it was just, you know, higher before. So I even practiced harder. I would put in an hour, two hours a night. And by the time this rolled around, I was in the high 200s. And I did not know why. And it wasn't like, you know, I just didn't know why. And I keep on going harder and harder and harder at it. And by the time I got to regional, I was scoring 250. There is a thing as burnout. So you have to watch the burnout. Yes. Okay. Your mind after a while, it can't handle that, you know, that much work on it. And it needs a break. It needs a break. So if you're going to go compete, all the guys that have aspired to be state champion, make sure you peak in the spring. Don't peak in the fall. There's no use. It doesn't matter if you peak in the fall. Peak in the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make sure you peak at, at region and uh, at district, region, and, and state level at that time. Yeah. Don't peak before. Oh, that's some good advice. That's interesting advice. If you want, I can put your email in the, uh, in the uh, video description when I publish. Of course. I would love right. to hear from anybody. All right. Great. I'll do that. I'll do that. That's interesting. I like it. You know what? I, there's an interview I did just yesterday. I haven't published it yet. And the young kid was talking about burnout. Yes. He was talking. So what you said, this is the second day in a row now that I hear somebody talk about burnout. So that's a real phenomenon. That's a Yes, real it phenomenon. is a real wow. phenomenon. Interesting. Well, great advice, and I'm glad you mentioned that. I really am. So, what does the future hold for Dr. Nue Ho? 
Well, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, the company continue, my company continues to be successful. And then I'm hoping to do something, you know, uh, with that company. I, I would really would love, would love to at our cost is maybe to uh, uh, sponsor a, uh, uh, um, you know, like a hospital in Vietnam for the poor. Uh, oh, even, wow. uh, even sponsoring uh, something like an orphanage. Uh, that's what I would really love to do wow. um, in, in the future. So that you know, I'm I'm Vietnam, and so my my heart's still back over there. Sure, so sure. There's a lot of people suffering over there. So I would love to be able to have a company to do that. We, my brother and I, are raised are talking about you know that since we have more money now, we may uh, establish a scholarship yeah, uh, specifically yeah. for my grandfather who taught all of us this, and you know a, a scholarship where we can just give some uh, uh, some well deserved a young man or young woman money go to college that type of thing so I think that's where now I get to give back to the community so I'm, I'm looking forward to that oh that's great man I hope that future does live. hey do me a favor one more time uh, state the name of your company and the service it provides okay we're, we're called total care to you so total care t-o-t-a-l-c-a-r-e to the number two the letter u dot com you can look at some on the internet okay right and what we do is we take the sickest population and take care of them in their home. So instead they go to the doctor because, and they can't because they're too sick or whatnot, we go to the home and take oh, care of them. Okay. That we, we, you know, we uh, bring the medical doctor to them. Yeah, wow, what a service, what a service. Well, I wish you the best of luck and I hope those dreams and those future uh, aspirations, I hope they all come to fruition. I hope no, they thank all happen, you. man, seriously. So, Dr. Nue Ho, 1985 Number Sense Champion, Brazos Wood, um, the Buccaneers. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> oh, do you have any parting words or final thoughts as we conclude this interview? Not, you know, at my personal belief, and people would say this is cliche, we're not. If you decide to go through the journey and compete, you're already a winner. Yeah. You're, already, you, you're already a winner whether you, you know, get the medal pin on you or not. You're already winning because you choose to compete. You choose to put yourself out there and go for it. So that would, you would take that lesson and it's going to carry you so far in life. So just because you didn't win, you know, a medal, just because you win state or whatnot, does not matter. Because in my opinion, you already know how to compete, and that would that, that just a big step uh, when you become an adult. So. Oh, absolutely! Great words. Great, great, great final thought, Doctor Nuejo. Um, Thank you. So you're a great conversationalist. I've really enjoyed this uh, this uh, interview. <laughs> you you're really easy to flow and interact with. So I really enjoyed right. the interview. And you know you never know what the future holds. One day I might have my fishing pole cast. Look across and I'll see Dr. Nueho. Yeah, and our, our our line will be tangled together. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Just as long as my fish got the hook in it. Right. <laughs> I'm playing with you, but that's awesome. I've really enjoyed this uh, conversation. I really appreciate your perspective. Uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Nuejo. Well, thank you for having me. All right, Dr. Nuejo, farewell and best of luck, okay? Thank you so much. All right. All right. Wow, Dr. Nuejo, the 1985 state champion in number sense from Brazoswood High School, a proud buccaneer. That was a great and enjoyable conversation with Dr. Nuejo. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do enjoy content like this, let me remind you to please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, smash that like button, and uh, leave a comment below. I have many more things in store for this channel. I really appreciate your support. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Saul Cantu, and this is Texas Mad Mundo. Farewell.